Hey Subfuries, and welcome back to part 3 of our Elder Scrolls lore series, where I walk you through the mysteries, histories, and curiosities of Tamriel. We've already covered large parts of the Dawn era, but today's topic goes way back to the real start of Elven history. The Velothi dissident movement that fractured society on the Somerset Isles. Who was the Prophet Veloth? What did he believe? And where did his people go? Everyone knows about the Ultima, the Bosma, the Dunma, the Maoma, the Dwemer, the Orisma, and the Falma, but a lot of Elder Scrolls fans haven't heard of the Kaima. Except, you have heard of them. Simply put, the Kaima are the ancestors of the Dark Elves, the Dunma. So settle down, kids. This is their story. Like you know, Elder Scrolls history isn't always clear cut. Two events are intimately tied together here the Velothi dissident movement and the beginning of the Orc race. The reasons why they are connected, I will get to soon. Different sources place these two events variously in both the Dawn Era and the Marethic Era. So while the title notes that the Velothi Dissident Movement happened in the Dawn Era, what I really mean is that these events happened a long time ago, and there is no real definitive point in the lore where the Dawn Era ends and the Marethic or Mythic Era begins. Our story begins at the height of Aldmeri society on the Somerset Isles, described as sophisticated, literate, and technologically advanced. But a man by the name of Veloth saw something wrong with society. Depending on who you ask, the Aldmer he criticized, or those who see him as a saint, Veloth began the dissident movement for different reasons. Frestus of Alenhir, an imperial scholar, believed that Veloth had a lust for power, a corrupting desire. And because the Aedra, who were worshipped by the other Ultima, were very distant and hard to contact, Veloth turned to the Daedra. That the so-called Prophet Veloth communed with Boethia and agreed to accept her gifts. That Boethia had been speaking to Veloth in visions and dreams. This view that Veloth was a corruptible and power-hungry individual is probably biased and incorrect. The vast majority of historians agreed that Veloth was highborn, but he dared to cast off the decadent chains of Old Mary society. That he sought a more ascetic and pure way of life for his followers. He grew up in a wealthy and powerful family, and called out to those whose souls were weary, whose lives were ground out with no hope of improvement, in a society founded on ambition, greed, and decadence. Just go look at almost any high elf you can find in Skyrim. They're often materialistic, condescending, and deceptive. I'm not saying that Old Mary are Nazis, but they're, they're Nazis. You can see why he disliked them. Veloth's insight was that he was the first mortal to truly distinguish between the good and the bad Daedra, and to his people, this was the hallmark of a living saint. The Ultima disputed his claims, but in the Elder Scrolls Online, which is canon, by the way, we can meet a vestige of Veloth, who clearly cares about this distinction between good and bad Daedra. Veloth then wrote the Velothi prophecies, and rejected worship of the Aedra in favour of following the good Daedra, namely Mephala, Azura, and most importantly, Boethia. Veloth's teachings revolved around a stoicism, survival, lack of materialism and pride, where the Ultima saw themselves as fallen angels and direct descendants of the Aedra, hating and opposing the Daedra. The Kaima even believed that these bad Daedra, which they called the House of Troubles, served a purpose, to test the faith and resolve of mortals. Veloth also taught them how to negotiate with these kinds of Daedra, and it made them tough, resilient. This not just acceptance, but reveling in their mortality, resulted in the practice of Kaima ancestor worship, a culture that truly only survived through the Ashlander tribes. Veloth's dissident movement reached out to those who hoped for a society that preserved traditions, praised honesty, and rewarded the just, everything that he felt the Ultima didn't stand for. And these principles can be reflected in the mottos of the great houses of the Dunma. Tradition in House Redoran, Truth in House Drez, and Justice 
and House Endoral. With the Prince of Political Upheaval, Boethia, backing them, Veloth's movement was fundamentally a political shift in Old Mary culture. Slowly, various Aldmer clans joined him, while some opposed him viciously, accusing him of blasphemy, the most aggressive opposition being from the Aedra, Trinimac, and his followers. Their attempts to quell the movement led to the Sapiarchs, a group of ruling Aldmer mages, to outlaw Veloth's teachings. By all accounts, facing persecution, Valoth gathered his followers into a grand pilgrimage from the southwest regions of Tamriel to the northeast, after he had a vision of a land he would come to call Resdain, which was to be later renamed Morrowind. Contemporary sources hold that he spared not a boat, ration, or strong-armed soul among his people in this exodus and toil to reach the land of Resdain. But Trinimac and his followers attempted one more time to stop the Velothi dissident exodus. While I don't have time to theorize about the different accounts of what just happened, this resistance from Trinimac eventually resulted in Boethia playing a vital role in transforming Trinimac into the Daedra now known as Malekath and his followers supposedly becoming orcs. Though this is up for debate, as pretty much everything is in the Elder Scrolls, it's wonderful, really. There is various folklore and stories about this pilgrimage to Resdain, but the only real tale we have is the end of a journey, and whether or not this is accurate is highly up for debate. It talks about how, for untold weeks, they climbed a mighty range of mountains under Valoth's leadership. Many among the Kaima considered this path to be folly, but they were driven by Veloth's unyielding certainty and commitment. They then came to a wall of ice, possibly a glacier, and a woman stepped out from it. She demanded a sacrifice from Veloth, who immediately gave up violence and dedicated his life and soul to his people. Then known as the Kaima, because they didn't want to be called Altma. They didn't want to be Nazis, in other words. They rejected the Aldmeri heritage. The then Prophet Valoth became regarded as the patron saint of outcasts and the seekers of spiritual knowledge, but he wasn't non-violent. In fact, his Warhammer is an incredibly powerful artifact that you can find in-game. Even sources supporting Valoth regard him as both a scholar and a war hero to the Kaima, hence why it was such a significant thing for him to give up his Warhammer as they entered Resdain. It's possible that this was more symbolic like that he had fought tooth and nail for so long for the Kaima all across Tamriel to reach Resdain, that when they finally did, he decided he would fight no more. This is supported by the fact that his relics are heavily associated with healing. The Terith Saint Valoth was supposedly made when he first set eyes on Resdain, that it rolled down his cheek and crystallized, and now has the power to restore others. Given that the tear is about a meter long, this legend is also probably dubious, but clearly it has its roots in the Velothi movement. The holy vessel of Saint Veloth also quenches the thirst of those who drink from it, but it was also used to help grow the new crops in this hostile landscape. So who was Veloth, and what was the Velothi dissident movement? Abhorred by the greed and arrogance of Aldmeri culture, Veloth called to the poor and forgotten of society rejecting Aedra worship in favor of the good Daedra. Trinimac and his followers tried to stop them, but Boethia stepped in to support them. Leaving Somerset Isle, they followed Veloth to Resdain and settled in the land that would one day be known as Morrowind. They then entered a time known as the period of High Velothi culture, but all things eventually fade and the Kaima would one day be transformed into the dark-skinned Dunmer. How and why? Well that, is a story for another time. But that's all from me, Sub Furies, and if there are any other Elder Scrolls questions on the lore or history that you'd like me to do videos on, then let me know down below. In the meantime, I'd love for you to follow me on Twitter, Wattpad, Facebook, email me or support me at Patreon, it all helps. Send me stuff you've made at the links and address in the descriptions below. Stay nerdy, Sub Furies, and I'll see you in the future.